Hello Tiffany, I'm Henry, I'll be your dentist today. Alright, so before we start, we're going to have to go through a medical history. Yep, that's fine. I see here that you're allergic to latex, is that right? Yes, very. Alright, so today we'll be using non-latex gloves and rubber dams, so you'll be fine. Okay, sounds good. So Tiffany, did you bring an EpiPen with you today? I did, yes, it's in my bag. Alright, that's good. We're not going to need it today though. Oh, okay, that sounds good. I'm just going to glove up real quick. Oh, we're out of gloves. Claudia? Yes? Could you grab me some more gloves and a rubber dam, please? Yeah, sure. That's good, Claudia. Thanks. Right, open up, Tiffany. I'm getting really hot. I can't read. That's alright, we're almost done. Breathe through your nose. <laughs> I can't read. Right, stop, Claudia. We need to get this rubber dam off. <laughs> Tiffany, where's your EpiPen? <laughs> Claudia, we need to find an EpiPen. As dentists, we will encounter a number of medical emergencies such as the one you have just seen. What has happened here is an example of anaphylactic shock, a severe, potentially life-threatening allergic reaction and requires immediate assistance and treatment. Anaphylaxis is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction and has various systemic effects. The reaction is provoked by re-exposure to a specific allergen in patients that have been previously sensitized. Onset is immediate, with 90% of all reactions occurring within 40 minutes of allergen exposure. Let's take a closer look at anaphylaxis. The first time an antigen enters the body, it is engulfed by an antigen-presenting cell, which breaks it down and presents it to a T helper cell. At the same time, B cells also uptake the antigen and produce various antibodies. The T helper cell communicates with the B cell to produce specific IgE antibodies against the antigen. These IgE antibodies are released into the bloodstream and cross-link to the FC epsilon RI receptor on mast cells and basophils. This process is known as sensitization and primes the immune system for subsequent exposure to the antigen. On second exposure, the antigen binds to IgE on the primed mast cells or basophils. This results in degranulation of these granulocytes, releasing inflammatory mediators such as histamine. Histamine has a wide range of effects on many parts of the body. Vasodilation of blood vessels and increased vascular permeability allows extravasation of inflammatory cells, resulting in edema and erythema of local tissues. Symptoms can manifest in a variety of ways. For example, on the skin, urticaria and itchiness can occur. The respiratory tract can also be affected as histamine leads to contraction of smooth muscles, causing bronchoconstriction. Narrowing of the trachea may also occur, resulting in shortness of breath, wheezing, and coughing. On top of this, other signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis include a swollen tongue or throat, weak rapid pulse, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, hypertension, dizziness, fainting, and loss of consciousness. There are certain factors that may predispose a patient to anaphylaxis, which dentists should be aware of. These include previous anaphylactic reactions, allergies, asthma, and mastocytosis, which is the buildup of mast cells. Latex and penicillin are the most common triggers of anaphylaxis in dentistry. There are many other triggers as well. For example, peanuts, shellfish, insects, seafood, and pollen, just to name a few. As such, every dental clinic should carry an EpiPen, which contains adrenaline. Adrenaline counteracts the physiological effects caused by excessive histamine release. This helps to reverse hypertension, bronchoconstriction, and angioedema, while also reducing release of inflammatory mediators. Whilst the EpiPen may be able to prevent anaphylaxis from progressing further, the following precautions should still be taken to prevent anaphylaxis occurring in the first place. Firstly, 
A thorough medical history should be taken to be aware of predisposing factors, which Henry did effectively in this scenario. This allows the practitioner to avoid known allergens. If a patient has a reported allergy, they should be instructed to bring an EpiPen to their appointment. In this case, Henry did the right thing by asking the patient if she had brought her EpiPen. However, he should have placed the EpiPen in an easily accessible area, instead of leaving it in her bag. Let's take a closer look at what Henry did wrong and what he could have done instead. Henry forgot to mention the patient's allergies to his dental assistant. Instead, Henry should have warned his dental assistant of the patient's latex allergy. Could you get me some more gloves and a rubber dam, please? Yeah, sure. And can you make sure they're latex free as well? Okay, can do. Thank you. And double check the gloves and rubber dam materials for latex. <laughs> Henry ignored his patient's complaints of breathing difficulties and continued treatment. Henry should have stopped treatment immediately upon the onset of symptoms of anaphylactic shock and removed the allergen. Are you alright, kid? Uh, I'm getting really hot. I can't breathe. Alright, stop, Claudia. Uh. We need to get this rubber dam on. Don't allow the patient to sit up or get out of the chair. Henry did the right thing by ensuring the patient was lying down flat in the dental chair. I need to sit up. Can't breathe. Tiff, I need you to lie down. <laughs> An intramuscular injection of adrenaline was given to the patient via the anterolateral thigh. <laughs> when using an EpiPen, the following dosages are administered according to the appropriate EpiPen. For an adult or child weighing more than 20 kilograms, 300 micrograms of adrenaline should be given. For children between 10 to 20 kilograms, the appropriate dosage is 150 micrograms of adrenaline. In the absence of a preloaded auto injector, the following doses of adrenaline should be used. For both adults and children, 10 micrograms per kilogram can be given up to a maximum dose of 500 micrograms. The EpiPen is designed to penetrate most clothes, so it is not necessary to remove a patient's clothing. Once Henry has correctly injected adrenaline, he has instructed his assistant to call triple zero. Claudia, call triple zero. It is important to be prepared for the worst. Provide the patient with supplemental oxygen and airway support if needed. Be prepared to start CPR. Claudia, stop breathing. We need to start CPR. It is vital to keep administering adrenaline injections at 5 minute intervals until the patient regains consciousness or the paramedics arrive. The paramedics here. Can you please tell me what's happening? The patient's had an allergic reaction to latex. I've given her one EpiPen and oxygen and started CPR after she stopped breathing. Okay. After the paramedic takes the patient to the emergency department, it is important to follow up by updating the patient records. These records should note the patient's response and the suspected allergen. A copy of the medical report of the allergic reaction should also be requested. The dentist should call the patient the following day to check up on them. Despite adequate management and treatment, a minority of patients may experience a biphasic reaction. This is a recurrence of anaphylaxis without any additional exposure to the allergen. The signs and symptoms are the same as the initial anaphylactic reaction, with the severity ranging from mild to life-threatening. Okay. Corticosteroids may be administered to prevent biphasic anaphylaxis from occurring, but let's leave that up to the medical staff. A thorough understanding of all these steps allows us as practitioners to ensure patient safety and comfort if such a medical emergency were to occur. All right, Tiffany, we're all done today. Everything went smoothly. Oh, great. I'm glad we didn't need to use that EpiPen. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs>